A warm welcome to your Harvard Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, July 14. Sighs of relief from happy class for primary school students as they completed the common interest examination today. Some 3,544 pupils took the test that determines their entrance to secondary school and according to education authorities, the process was hitch-free. Acting Chief Education Officer Joy Adamson said health protocols were in place including temperature checks, the sanitizing of hands and physical distancing. She noted a few students became ill but they were given extra time to complete the test and those who couldn't will be given an alternative date. The examination wrapped up about 1 p.m. and students shared their experiences with our news team. Today's examination, it was good, but the mask was a little bit hard, but I still got it did. done. Okay, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling happy that it's over with. Right, and what are you hoping for? I'm hoping that to get my choice of my school. What's that choice? St. Leonard's. I feel pretty good. I glad it over because like it was real much pressure on us because we had to push really hard and I think we deserve all of this because we come really far and we teacher push us and we teacher get some of the credit too. I feel glad because I had I get a little bit time to rest because I worked so hard to um, to pass for my school at pass for Springer. Mm -hmm. Mommy, me, want me to go to Springer? And the exam was pretty easy. Especially, I thought it was going to be hard, but it was pretty easy actually. So you read carefully and you answered your, all your questions. Yes, I read. I read very carefully, and I actually managed to answer all my questions. Yes, please. Okay, what school are you hoping to pass? I am hoping to pass for a combi mirror. It was scared. But I do what I had to do. I get out of the room as quick as as quick as possible, and that was it. You get out as quick as possible. So, did you do? Did you read all the questions carefully and answer them carefully? Yes, please. Okay, I hope so. What school are you hoping to go to? Dayton Griffith. Dayton. How, how was the math in English? Well, the math was kind of hard, but I got through with the English. For a little while this morning, some workers at Oran walked off the job. They were concerned about what they describe as unsafe working conditions at the Harbour Road facility. Among the concerns was a rat infestation and damaged flooring. Officials from the Barbados Workers' Union and management quickly met, and the company agreed to immediately address the workers' concerns. The BWU Industrial Officer Shakira Williams spoke to reporters. The workers did not engage in strike action, but rather they were expressing their right in alignment with the safety and health at work legislation that if it is that they feel uncomfortable at any point in time within their work environment and assume it to be eminently dangerous that they can remove themselves from that particular area until that issue is resolved and that is exactly what happened today. We've had discussions with the management since we heard the, the workers plea and since then we've had they have brought in a company to assess the area again and to also initiate the process of baiting and other methods that they can use to try to eliminate the situation as best as they can. We also had a cleaning agency come in as well to sanitize the area so that the workers will feel a little more comfortable working within the environment. Um, as was said before by Simone, it is an issue that has been going on for a little while now. Um, and the workers were at the point where, you know, when you have the, the methodology of baiting that quite obviously these rodents and so on, they would show up and is a means of cleaning them and cleaning them on an immediate basis. So that is what has been happening now. And it's just a means of us continuing to update with the company to find out what phases they have been able to conquer and how far the issue has been able to resolve as best as it possibly could within this environment. The Blackman Gollop Primary School is all cleaned and will be ready for students when the new school year begins in September. The Staple Grove Christchurch facility was used as an isolation facility for COVID-19 patients, but has now been handed back to the Ministry of Education following an extensive sanitization process. The compound now boasts a number of improvements, complements of the Ministry of Health, including newly painted classrooms and bathrooms, improved lighting fixtures, water tanks, and upgraded Wi-Fi. Education Minister Santia Bradshaw, union officials, and representatives from the school's Parent Teachers Association toured the school yesterday. They all expressed satisfaction that the students would be returning to a safe compound when the new term begins. 
Prime Minister Mia Motley today took her case for Britain to start the conversation on reparations for Caribbean countries as she appeared on ITV's Good Morning Britain. Motley insisted that the discussion was not just about money, but righting the wrongs of the past that has hindered the full development of Caribbean countries. The underdevelopment of Africa, the underdevelopment of the Caribbean, the underdevelopment of Latin America, in many instances, is a child of the colonial experiment. And the colonial experiment extracted wealth and in some of these countries, the extractive uh, attitudes still remain such that we've not been able to build the kind of domestic enterprises and the domestic foundation that's necessary to sustain our people. And the biggest problem more often than not is mental too. We've removed the legal vestiges to discrimination in many instances, but it is the mental emancipation, um, Bob Marley popularize the words of Marcus Garvey. It is the mental emancipation, it's the use of things like blacklisting of um, Caribbean countries, or it's the use of and, and other countries for tax or other purposes. <clears throat> it's the use of this kind of language that associates negative with black and positive with white. And, and then when you start to look at the difficulties in the United States of America with respect to policing and access into basic services or what it takes to have persons struck from voters' lists, all of these are things that deprive ordinary people from the promise of development. That should be all of ours. There's regional and international news after this short break. Regional news. A key meeting of Guyana's Elections Commission today on the results of the March 2 general elections was deferred after a new legal action was filed. The court filing is seeking to have the 10 declarations submitted by embattled Chief Election Officer Keith Lowenfield used for the finalizing of the election result. We get an update from Newsroom Guyana. Those court proceedings were filed by a private citizen and the support of the incumbent APNU AFC coalition, Masinga Jones. At the female is represented by attorney at law Mayo Robertson. We also know that the Chief Justice has set 11 a.m. tomorrow morning to hear the case in the High Court. Uh, we will be following the case and bringing you updates. Uh, the application filed by the private citizen is seeking to uh, restrain the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission from declaring the results using the recount figure. Now this is happening while the Caribbean Court of Justice has already ruled that the recount figures cannot be set aside and the election results must be declared using those figures. The chair of the commission, Claudette Singh, has also set aside the 10 declarations from all the districts uh, in, at her meeting yesterday and the court, um, the court application that has been filed is also seeking uh, to to prevent to for the court to give a declaration on whether she can or cannot uh, set aside those ten declarations from the ten districts. On the international scene, weeks of torrential rains have caused the worst flooding in China in recent decades, destroying the homes and livelihoods of millions of people as the country struggles to revive an economy battered by the coronavirus pandemic. China's government mobilizing into what one official calls wartime mode, splitting its efforts between containing the novel coronavirus to now stopping widespread flooding. It's already proven devastating and deadly. Heavy downpours in recent weeks have left multiple parts of the country submerged. Officials say the rising waters are surging through roughly 27 provinces, cities and regions impacting more than 37 million people, forcing about 2 million residents out of their homes. At least 141 people are missing or presumed dead. This man telling local media, it is my responsibility and it's everyone's responsibility to work to contain the floods from further spreading. The hardest hit areas are along the Yangtze, Asia's longest river. It flows east through cities like Wuhan, the original epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. The bustling metropolis first paralyzed this year by the brutal 76-day lockdown. 
Now it sits soaked by relentless rains. In eastern China's Jiangxi province, officials have raised the emergency response for flood control to its highest level. Lakes and rivers are surpassing record depths, both state and social media capturing the many images of destruction and despair. Multiple rescue efforts now underway, from crews carrying a newborn to safety to offering their backs to an elderly man unable to wade through the currents alone. And the search for survivors happening late into the night. For those who make it to dry land, humanitarian teams setting up shelters and dishing out meals. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.